Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So as we are talking about the separation of particulate materials by different mechanisms and they are uh, we uh, already uh, discussed in our earlier lectures the separation of the particulate materials by that uh, settling chamber, even cyclone separator, uh, uh, even we have discussed uh, that uh, electrostatic precipitator by which you can separate that particulate materials and their uh, you know mechanism and also how uh, efficiency can be calculated by those you know uh, equipment or mechanism. So, in this lecture, uh, we will try to learn something more about that particulate material separation and in this case the separation will be by industrial fabric uh, filters. So, what is that uh, industrial fabric filters? Uh, these are basically accomplished in a uh, so called bag house in industry uh, you will see that is called bag house in which the particle laden gases are forced through the filter bags and particles are generally removed from the bags by gravity there. So, here you will see that uh, in this slide one uh, picture uh, is shown here this picture has been taken uh, from you know Encyclopedia Britannica from the open source. So, I think uh, uh, you can get it uh, this uh, picture uh, of this uh, you know industrial fabric filters or it is called bag house. Here in the same bar you will see that uh, some bags are you know uh, attached or installed in such way that from the bottom part of this uh, bag, bag is basically a cloth and it will be porous uh, media and through the porous uh, you will see that air will be passed through whereas the particles of that specific size of that pore will not be passed through if its size is larger than uh, that pores of that bag. So, whenever that particle laden gas will be passed through this uh, or allowed to pass through these bags of that fabric, you will see that the particle laden uh, gas it will be uh, separated here just by uh, retaining those you know particulate materials inside that bag uh, and uh, that through the pores of that bag the gas will be uh, passing out. So, here this is basically a one type of filter and this filter depends on that fabric uh, you know cloth pores and if uh, the fabric cloth pores is you know very fine then you can uh, you will be able to uh, you know separate this fine particulate materials you know based on that size of that pores. So, here you will see that in this bag house there will be you know the provision at the bottom through which that you know dusty air will be allowed to pass and it will be passing uh, through like this and it will uh, go through that bottom part of this bag and inside that bag it will be flowing and uh, during that flow you will see that uh, through the pores that gas will be coming out just by retaining its uh, particulate material inside this bag uh, at the other side of this you know part of this bag. So, here uh, from this position that clean air uh, will be coming out. So, this is basically uh, these are actually a filter bag ok. So, uh, this so uh, after a certain time of that separation of that particulate materials you will see that particles will be deposited on the surface of this cloth and uh, it will be then you know collecting after just by a uh, you know shaking mechanism. That means here by a shaking of this you know bag you will see that uh, uh, particles will be falling down of course after stopping that uh, dirty air inlet. So, this bag uh, filter works in industry to separate those particulate materials. Now, there are two fundamental mechanisms by which particles can be you know removed from a stream of gas passing through a porous fabric. Now, the most obvious of this uh, is a sheaving mechanism. Basically, the sheaving mechanism that means the fabric uh, will have that some porous uh, you know uh, opening uh, in that case through which that uh, you know particle laden gas will be you know uh, allowed to pass where that particles will be retained uh, based on this you know higher size particle uh, on the uh, one part of this fabric. So, in this case uh, particles too large to pass through the mesh of the fabric are caught and retained on the surface of the you know filter. The caught particles gradually build up on the filter so that the 
nature of the gas flow path continually increases while it's the effective mesh size will decreases keep on when uh, it will be depositing those particles there. And the collecting efficiency uh, of that filter will therefore tend to be improved by use but of course the pressure drop across it will uh, also uh, increase because of the deposition of the particles on the surface and regular cleaning will be required to get this you know this cloth free uh, for uh, uh, further using ok. So, this is the mechanism simple mechanism that uh, this is basically that you know uh, 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 fabric uh, there will be a you know porous uh, fabric and through that porous that you know particles will be retained as per their size and whereas uh, cleaning gas will be coming uh, out from that fabric after filtering. So, the fabric filtration process uh, you will see that uh, consists of three phases. In first phases you will see that particles collect on individual fibers here as shown figure and uh, then intermediate stage their particles uh, accumulate on previously collected particles and bridging the fibers. You will see that here in this case the particles will be you know uh, uh, retaining of this surface uh, here in this case and uh, uh, through these pores that uh, you know air will be passing or you know gas will be uh, passing out and keep on uh, depositing uh, you know uh, while that you know uh, filter will be continuously you know operated. So, particles will be uh, depositing uh, with respect to time. So, that deposition with respect to time it will be intermediate stage. So, it will be accumulated on the previously collected particles that means one particle if it is accumulated here then another particles will be you know depositing on that other particles like that. So, there will be a formation of breeze and the final stage you will see that that collected particles uh, you know that uh, form a cake in the form of a dust layer. So, here you will see that here uh, it will be a dust layer in this case. So, this dust layer uh, that will be called as a cake. So, that acts as a packed bed filter for the incoming particles here. So, whenever particles will be coming here you will see that this uh, cake will be you know barrier and through this cake also that particles will be passing uh, gas will be passing through. So, one packed bed operation will be there here in synthesis. So, initially you will see that the through the pores uh, the gas will be coming out and uh, with respect to time particles will be depositing and continuously depositing one by one and forming a cake uh, as a layer ok. So, this is the case. So, these three stages actually will give you the uh, operation for this fabric filtration process. Now, uh, question is what are the materials to be used for this fabric? Generally, you know woven fabric, felted fabric, membrane fabric, sintered material, fiber, ceramic cartridge those are being used in industry for you know that as a you know that uh, materials uh, for that uh, fabric. So, in this case woven fabric here as shown in the picture even cartridge filter even felted uh, you know uh, fabric are being used in industry. And uh, you have to select that uh, fabric, uh, you will see that uh, the selection of that fabric depends on different parameters in which temperature that uh, you know uh, bag house will be operated, what is the you know uh, resistance uh, by that you know uh, fabric and also what will be the tensile strength, what is the durability of that fabric, what is the is there any chemical resistance by that fabric or not whether it is acid resistant or not or alkali resistant or not and also uh, will it be supported uh, that combustion or not. So, all those factors will be you know affecting on the selection of fabric. Generally uh, you know polyethylene uh, fiber, cotton, polypropylene, wool, nylon, even uh, orlon that is called acrylic, even uh, you know dacron that is called polyester. Nomex poly uh, you know poly uh, it, it is called polyaramide even uh, you also Teflon uh, generally it is that uh, PTFE and glass fibers those are actually uh, special fibers that uh, are being used in industry as a you know fabric and this fabric is uh, widely used but those fabrics will be you know uh, some fabrics will be uh, very good some will be very excellent in nature and also based on that uh, you know different factors that I told. So, in this case you will see polyethylene if you use that uh, materials uh, you know 
can withstand at up to you know 65 degree Celsius. Whereas its uh, you know abrasion resistance is very excellent and tensile strength is very excellent you can say chemical resistance also excellent and chemical resistance for alkalis and acid both the cases it is excellent and also uh, it is actually supported for combustion also. So, this type of materials are very you know widely used in industry. Sometimes cotton also used as a you know fabric there. So, in that case because it has have, you know uh, more temperature resistance like say up to 70 degrees Celsius, but you know abrasion resistance should be you know fair you can say that oh, we can say that good ok. And other uh, property like tensile strength is fair, uh, chemical resistance poor as chemical resistance for alkalis is, uh, is good and also though it is uh, you know supported that combustion, but it is not uh, as much as uh, you know uh, suitable as compared to that polyethylene. Even other materials here it is given uh, you will see that uh, some materials like glass fiber though it has higher resistance of temperature, but it is uh, abrasion resistance will be poor whereas tensile strength will be very uh, uh, good or excellent you can say. But uh, acid uh, you know uh, resistance will be average, but alkali resistance is very poor. So, uh, it cannot be you know used widely there. Uh, for specific purpose it can be used. Whereas, you will see that uh, uh, Teflon, Teflon uh, also uh, high resistance of temperature, but other uh, like uh, it is not uh, highly uh, tensile uh, uh, durability. Uh, also uh, it is not good for alkali resistance, but uh, acid resistance is very good uh, and also combustion will not be supported by this. So, in this case it is also not good. Whereas, uh, you will see that uh, some uh, you know materials uh, like Dacron, uh, they are uh, it is called polyester. It is though uh, high temperature resistance and also abrasion resistance is excellent, uh, tensile resistance is also excellent. But uh, you will see that uh, acid and uh, alkali resistance not up to the mark consider good, but not up to the mark whether uh, uh, it will be combustion supported or not is also yes that is combustion supported. So, you know uh, uh, as an average you can say that Dacron uh, or polyester uh, sometimes can be used, but it is a you know economic uh, whereas uh, you know that polyethylene is uh, excellent in other you know alkali acids or durability. Uh, even abrasion resistance, even combustion supported, but its temperature is uh, temperature resistance is very low. So anyway, uh, as per adaptation of the industry, uh, you know, the purpose and also that specific purposes that you have to select, which uh, you know fabric will be suitable as per this list. And uh, application, if you say that uh, already we know that uh, where that you know uh, this type of you know back filters are being used or as a bag house uh, in industry is used. High efficiencies are attainable with fabric filters particularly in uh, treating combustion gases from coal uh, fired boilers. There you will see that whenever coal is burned there will be you know that uh, from the outlet there will be very fine particles of carbonaceous particles those to be you know uh, separated by this you know bag filters. So, fabric filters can operate with no loss of efficiency with low sulphur fuel. Also, you have to remember that in steel production, flue gas streams uh, flow through bag house filters to you know extract any particulates uh, that is generated during the you know uh, it is called smelting process. So, this bag filters is suitable there. Also, you will see that some advantage and disadvantage of this uh, bag filtration. Here, uh, you will see that uh, this bag filter uh, can be you know suitable uh, for very high collection efficiency even for very small particles also. They can be used for wide variety of particles and they can operate over a wide range of you know volumetric flow rates and also uh, they require only moderate pressure drops. But there will be some uh, limitations you will see that for very fine particles it is also uh, sometimes not suitable because uh, they are you know uh, pressure will be very high to uh, you know resist uh, that you know uh, particles even uh, passing that air uh, through that very fine uh, you know pores. So, their high pressure will be there. Even uh, in this case uh, one example the very large floor area is required and also uh, temperature is also one of the limitation points some fabric will not be you know suitable for high temperature. 
so in that case it will not be economic and also gas or particle constitutes that attack the fabric or prevent proper cleaning also sometimes very fine particles whenever it will be clogging that force it is very difficult to clean uh, to uh, separate those fine particles from the fabric so it will be clogged that you know pores and then efficiency of that filter will be reduced so there are uh, some advantages and limitations so accordingly uh, you will see optimize that you know operation uh, or selection of that fabric at which temperature at which pressure that fabric to be you know uh, used and accordingly you have to you know choose and in this case some design consideration to be you know uh, followed in this case the major consideration in the design of a fabric filter is basically you have to consider what would be the collection efficiency compared to the other uh, equipment or mechanism by which that particulate material can be separated also size of the particles also one of the important uh, point and pressure drop as a function of time of operation you will see that with respect to time that pressure will be uh, increasing because of that you know uh, deposition of the particulate materials in a layer and forming a cake and the collection efficiency depends on also the local gas velocity the particle loading on the fabric air to cloth ratio also holes tears gaps is there any bindings or bag blockage is there or not so all those parameters to be considered for the design of that bag filters and uh, one important point here that you have to remember that the bag filters are available in a uh, very wide range of sizes of bags varying in diameter from about 100 uh, you know uh, millimeter up to almost 1 meter and uh, from 0 0.1 to 10 meter long and common you know alternative design of bag filter uses rectangular envelopes instead of cylindrical tubes of fabric there there are two you know uh, types of bag filters is there based on that flow direction of that you know uh, uh, air uh, or dirty air or you can say that particle laden air or gas so uh, here you will see that uh, one uh, will be as uh, when air flows up the inside of the bag and through the side walls here as shown in the picture here you will see that through the side walls that gas will be flowing whereas gas uh, will be flowing through that you know uh, bags and it will be separated here in this picture so here uh, opening is that here side of this you know bag no this is uh, you know goes up this inside of the here inside of the bag here inside of the bag so from that inside the air will be flowing out okay whereas in this case air flows up from the outside of the bag here this is here this is the bag and from this outside the you know air will be flowing from the outside so from the outside air will be flowing and it will go to the you know inside of that bag and through that bag you know uh, it will be uh, coming out so here that means here one mechanism is that that air will be flowing from the inside of the bag another will be from the outside of the bag so this is the mechanism after you know deposition of the particles in the bag that you have to separate either by shaking mechanism or by you know other mechanism especially for when air flows are from the outside of the bag in that case inside the bag that there you have to you know uh, produce some clean air jet through you know uh, through uh, that is inside the bag so that that particles which is deposited outside the bag it will be uh, it will be you know uh, just uh, fallen down because of that you know sudden you know momentum of that you know jet inside the bag so this is the you know uh, air nozzle it is called through air nozzle air you know jet will be produced inside the bag here in the second option whereas in the first option that there you can shake that bag you know uh, and that particles will be you know falling downward because of that shaking action so uh, in this way we are having this two types of two mechanism of this bag filter uh, for its uh, you know design so one will be that uh, flow will be from the inside of the bag and flow will be from the outside of the bag and cleaning method there are uh, different mechanisms there are widely cleaning methods are you know shaking method 
reverse air cleaning method and pulse jet you know cleaning method some you know uh, bags will be you know cleaned based on that you know uh, shaking method and some will be you know cleaned with uh, you know reverse air cleaning that means by uh, uh, you will see that by jet uh, clean air jet uh, inside the bag and uh, by momentum of that jet that uh, particles will be detaching from that you know bag. So, that is called reverse air cleaning method and then uh, pulse jet cleaning method also there will be a again that uh, uh, there will be a you know pulsation of that bag will be done uh, or it is called shaking almost that you know. But during that uh, jet that jet also will be parallelly that uh, you know uh, pulsation jet uh, so that you know uh, particles will be detaching. So, reverse air cleaning basically uh, what is that uh, uh, as per that jet uh, way also uh, in this case uh, the reverse air may not be a, as a, a jet it will be supplied only thing is that only uh, as per that higher pressure that uh, gas will be supplied through the bag that is clean gas will be supplied to the bag and because of that you know uh, you know reverse flow of that air the so particles will be you know detaching uh, what is actually uh, clogged or attached in the bag earlier co uh, condition. Uh, so, in this way that uh, that bag can be cleaned. So, we are having three methods that is uh, shaker cleaning method, another is reverse air cleaning method and third one is called pulse jet cleaning method. So, all these methods have their advantage and disadvantage. Shaking cleaning methods there are some advantage is that in this case you will see that the particles which are uh, actually uh, depositing uh, as a layer. Uh, you will see that uh, because of shaking uh, that uh, particles sudden uh, detachment of that that means called you know that that uh, shaking whenever it will be there there will be some you know uh, impact momentum on this that bag and based on which that it will be separated. Whereas reverse air cleaning it will also here that will be no impact certain impact but there you will be that simply that flow of that gas which will push that particles which is you know attached on that you know uh, one side of that bag it will be pushed uh, by that you know clean air. So, that you know because of that push or it is called drag action uh, by that air it will be coming downward. And then pulse jet it will be again that momentum it will be pulse setting momentum will be uh, uh, acting on that you know bag. So, that particles will be uh, you know sudden uh, because of that sudden impact it will be you know uh, detaching from the uh, filter surface. So, here uh, we are having uh, these three mechanism to clean that you know bag. Now, a uh, selection criteria of the fabric uh, filter we told that that uh, there are different uh, you know criteria different you know parameters that you have to consider for selecting of that uh, fabric filter. The selection of fabric filter depends on uh, criteria like this you know particle size range, nature of the solid material which is to be collected, even temperature of the conveying uh, uh, you know gas, even types of fabric. Also the size of unit required will depend principally upon maximum gas flow rate to be that is handled, maximum allowable pressure drop, even proportion of solid material which is carried by the gas and also method of cleaning to be used also frequency of replacement of the filter fabric. So, these are the some uh, points which is to be you know considered for the selection of fabric filter. Now, one of the important you know design parameter of this back filter it is called air to cloth ratio ok. In various industries they are maintaining some air to cloth ratio for their design. So, basically uh, this is defined as that uh, actual gas flow rate uh, divided by you know fabric surface area. That means, what will be the you know gas flow rate per unit fabric surface area that is called air to cloth ratio. And uh, you will see that in industry specially uh, portlet cement they are using uh, that air to you know cloth ratio is 1.2 to 1.5 for specially uh, where that reverse air is used for cleaning of that bag and 7 to 10 generally it is used uh, for pulse jet uh, you know cleaning process. And also you will see that uh, 
you know in industry like electric arcs they are using that 1.5 to 2.0 for reverse air cleaning system and uh, uh, 6 to 8 for pulse jet cleaning system even other uh, industry here uh, shown in this you know slide like iron uh, foundries lime kilns basic oxygen furnace even brick manufacturers even phosphate fertilizer even municipal incinerators so they are uh, actually used different ratio as per their adaptation of that you know particular process uh, also it depends on what type of you know cleaning of uh, you know method to be used also gas approach velocity another uh, important design uh, parameter so in this case uh, uh, this gas approach velocity is defined as that what will be the total gas flow rate uh, that is volumetric gas flow rate upon uh, the area of flow so that area uh, for flow it is basically what is the total compartment area minus bag projected area this will be considered as a area for flow and total compartment area minus then bag projected area how it will be calculated if you are using number of bags suppose n number of bags and what will be the circular area of bag at bottom that will be considered so here total compartment area minus number of bags into circular area of bag at bottom that will give you the area for flow so total bag area how will you calculate that number of bags into circumference area of each bag okay the product of number of bags and circumference area of each bag that will be uh, considered as a total bag area so we can easily calculate what will be the approach velocity once we know that total gas flow rate okay and uh, uh, what will be the area for flow area for flow can be calculated by this equation here so what will be the total compartment area what will be the bag projected area and total bag area can be calculated as number of bags into circumference area of each bag let us do an example for this now calculate the approach velocity of a pulse jet fabric filters where 250 bags of each diameter 0.15 meter and of height 2.45 meter its total compartment area is given 11.5 meter square and air to cloth ratio is 1.5 meter cube per minute per meter square so in this case you have to calculate what will be the approach velocity of a pulse jet fabric filters so here first of all you have to calculate what is the bag area bag area is what is that that means here pi into dl pi into d is given to you that means here 0.15 is diameter of the bag it is given and uh, l that is length or height of that bag it is given 2.45 so it is coming 1.54 meter square per bag now total bag area how many numbers of bag it is given 250 bags so you have to multiply this you know bag area per bag into number of bags so it will be coming as 288.5 meter square here and then total gas flow rate that will be equal to 1.5 into 288.5 uh, what is that 1.5 is basically what it is given that air to cloth ratio it is given 1.5 so what would the air flow rate there it is basically air flow rate by cloth area that will be your you know air to cloth ratio so from which we can get the total gas flow rate will be equal to 432.75 meter cube per minute now area of for flow that you have to calculate so total compartmental area minus bag projected area that will be your area for flow so total compartmental area it is given to you 11.5 but you need now bag projected area so bag projected area is basically number of bags into circular area of bag at bottom so here number of bags is 250 and circular area of the bag it is given pi d square by 4 so after substitution of diameter of this bag then you can have this 11.5 minus 4.42 which will be coming as 7.08 meter square so this is your area for flow so we now have area for flow we now have total gas flow rate 
So, you can calculate what will be the gas approach velocity. So, gas approach velocity will be equal to total gas flow rate divided by area for flow. So, total gas flow rate is 432.75 meter cube per minute divided by then what will be the area for flow it is 7.08 meter square. So, it is coming after calculation as 61.12 meter per minute. So, it is uh, 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 1.02 meter per second. Okay. So, in this way you will be able to calculate what will be the approach velocity. Okay. I think I understood this problem. Let us do another example here. Uh, here it is given that a reverse air bag house is used to separate the particulate matter from the effluent gas where the bag house has total 20 compartments and 2 compartments of which are out of service and 350 bags per compartment. The length of the bag and diameter are 10 meter and 0.3 meter respectively. If the actual flow rate of the gas effluent is 3.5 into 10 to the power 4 meter cube per minute, find the net air to cloth ratio. So, you have to find out air to cloth ratio. What is given here? Bag area is given to you. What is that pi dl? So, pi dd is given to you 0 0.30 and l length of this bag it is given. So, finally, you are getting that bag area is equal to 9.42 meter square per bag. And also, you have to assume that the all the compartments are in service. Okay. So, in that case, total bag area is what? 350 into 20 into 9.42. What is the 9.42 is the area per bag and 350 is what? This is the bags per compartment. You have 20 compartments. So, 350 into 20 that is will be total bag into surface area per bag that will give you the total bag area. It will be 659.40 meter square. So, in this case air to cloth ratio will be equal to what? 3.5 into 10 to the power 4 meter cube per minute divided by you know that 65940 meter square. So, it is coming what? 0 0.53 meter per minute. Now, question is that there are two compartments which are not in service. So, in this case total number of bags will be what? 18 instead of 20. So, total number of bags will be you have to have the uh, total number of compartments is 18 instead of 20. So, total number of bags will be what? 350 into 18. So, it will be as 6300 bags. So, total bag area will be equal to what? In this case 6300 into 9.42. So, it is coming as 59346 meter square. So, in this case air to cloth ratio will be equal to 3.5 into 10 to the power 4 meter cube per minute divided by here in this case area will be equal to 59346 meter square. So, it is coming 0 0.59 meter per minute. So, earlier in the idea if you are considering all the compartments are in active mode or in uh, service then in that case air to cloth ratio is 0 0.53 whereas if your bag uh, uh, you know uh, some compartment is not in uh, working condition. So, in that case the air to cloth ratio is coming 0 0.59. What does it mean here? That means in that case to get the same efficiency of the bag you have to increase the air flow rate because here air to cloth ratio is coming as 0 0.59 which is greater than 0 0.53 when all the compartments are active. So, in this case you will see that if 2 compartments or suppose some 3 or 4 or 5 if it is not working then you have to increase the flow rate to get the same efficiency of that you know particulate separation. But in that case you have to remember whether those flow rate will be withstanding that you know or uh, material uh, strength of that bag will it be uh, sufficient to withstand that you know high uh, pressure or not that also to be considered. So, accordingly that you have to decide. Then you have to calculate what will be the energy consumption by this bag house operation. So, energy consumption uh, can be calculated as which is denoted by E uh, unit in kilowatt hour. So, that will be equal to Q into delta P T into T divided by eta into 1000s. 
Here Q is basically what air volumetric flow rate that can be obtained from that air to cloth ratio and delta Pt is the total pressure drop during that operation, T is the time of operation, it is the efficiency of that fan or that means uh, or compressor uh, from which you are allowing that you know dirty gas or air and uh, so it depends on what will be the pressure drop, total pressure drop and also what will be the flow rate of that dirty air to be followed and also how long you will operate that you know bag house. So, all those three factors uh, you know will affect that you know energy consumption and uh, total pressure drop uh, actually will be contributed by it is called uh, you will see that fabric pressure drop as well as you know that uh, you know dust cake pressure drop. So, you will see that whenever the particles will be depositing continuously with respect to time on the surface of the bag fabric you will see that the deposition of that cake, cake will itself form a porous media and through that porous media there will be a certain you know cake formation. Uh, and that uh, cake formation will give you that extra pressure drop uh, for its operation. So, the pressure drop uh, because of that you know cake formation and also the pressure drop of that fabric materials uh, that uh, you know uh, give you the total contribution of the pressure. So, in that case we can write here total pressure drop as delta P T will be equal to delta P f plus delta P c. Delta P f is basically the fabric pressure drop and delta P c is basically the cake uh, pressure drop. Okay. So, delta P f can be calculated by this equation k 1 into V f that means k 1 is basically fabric resistance factor and V f is basically the fab filtration velocity and delta P c is also uh, can be calculated from this you know. Uh, uh, equation here where it will be is equal to k2 into ci vf square t. So, ci is basically what is that inlet dust concentration and vf is basically the filtration velocity and t is the time of operation. So, from this uh, you will be able to calculate what will be the fabric total pressure drop. Okay. So, from this uh, total pressure drop and uh, velocity of the particle laden gas and time of operation will give you the energy consumption. And then efficiency of filtration can be calculated by this equation here. It depends on what will be the outlet concentration of that you know particle and also inlet concentration of the particle. So, efficiency of that filtration it will be equal to uh, summation of that inlet concentration okay, within a certain range of particle size minus you know summation of that outlet concentration. Uh, within a size range of that particle divided by you know summation of that inlet concentration within a size range of particles. So, here it, will be, it is given here uh, in this equation here C i n is basically the concentration of particulate matter in front of the filter that is mass per unit volume of inlet air and C out is the concentration of particulate material beyond the filter. Uh, that means as an outlet condition you can say that it will be mass per unit volume of inlet air. So, in this case you have to consider that concentration within a certain range of particle what with which range of particle size will give you that concentration that you have to consider. So, accordingly you have to sum it up. Let us do an example here for this. It is said that a bag filter operates to separate the particulate matters of density 1500 kg per meter cube at particle laden gas flow rate of 1 meter cube per second. From 1 hour operation the particle number distribution at the inlet and outlet gas stream were found to be tabled as follows here and find the efficiency of the filtration process. So, here particle size range it is given 0 0.5 micrometer to 1 then 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 then 3 to 5. 5 to 10, 10 to 15 and 10, 15 to 25 micrometer in size and inlet number count, inlet number also it is given and outlet number also given of that particles which is uh, you know inlet and outlet of that back filter it is given. 
So, then you have to calculate what will be the concentration once you know that concentration at the inlet and outlet then you will be able to calculate what will be the you know efficiency of that you know filtration. So, for that what you have to do you have to calculate the C i that means here uh, uh, at a particular uh, particle uh, size range what will be the concentration. So, concentration can be calculated by this equation what will be the number of particles within a certain range that is i into density of that you know uh, particle and also what will be the volume of each particle. So, from which you will be able to calculate. So, this is your total uh, you know volume of that particles within that size range of particles divided by what will be the you know volumetric flow rate of that inlet gas. So, this is 1 meter cube of inlet gas into 100. So, by this equation you will be able to calculate what will be the you know concentration of that particles within a size range of that particle. So, here in this table it is calculated here particle size range accordingly what will be the inlet mass concentration and outlet mass concentration and uh, for different size range of that particles you are having this corresponding inlet mass concentration and outlet mass concentration. And what is the summation of those inlet here 3.9174 and the summation is 0.2920. So, after substitution of these values here in this equation and calculation you will get it will be around 92 percent. So, in this way you will be able to calculate what will be the efficiency of the filtration. Okay? So, I think understood uh, that uh, uh, the mechanism of back filtration, where that back filtrations are being used, what are the industries they are considering and what are the different types of back filters based on their design and also what are the different uh, design uh, you know factors to be considered for the design of that particular back filters based on you know uh, the cleaning mechanism of back filters. So, different industry they are using that back filters and their cleaning systems is different and also how to calculate that power consumption, how to calculate the air to you know cloth ratio, how to calculate the efficiency of that filtration that we have discussed. I think you understood this you know back filtration mechanism and efficiency and how that back filters works here. So, uh, uh, in the next lecture we will try to uh, you know discuss more about that the particulate material separation there another you know mechanism it will be considered. So, it is basically a weight scrubber for particle removal how it will be working. So, in the next lecture it will be discussed. So, thank you for giving your attention have a nice day.